Welcome to the first episode of season two. We are in season two. We're in fucking season two. I didn't two. think we were going to make it through season one. I wasn't sure we were going to make it to the first episode of season one. <laughs> and we did. And now we're here for the first episode of season two. Wow. We're here at Fifth and Mad in the heart of New York City, in Manhattan, Midtown Manhattan. Yeah, the heart. Which no is, kidding. first and foremost, a beautiful location. Uh, this you. is a bar restaurant. Yeah, so for those of gorgeous. you that are listening or for those of you that are watching, especially you see the decor behind us. Yeah. It's got this really awesome old school, almost like a, uh, how do you even describe this? Like a, uh, well, it looks like a library in a rich person's house. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Kind of something like that. It almost reminds me of like a, um, a speakeasy. It's a little bit. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's beautiful. I've been here before. The food's amazing. The drinks are amazing. And of course, our guest tonight is the managing partner of Fifth and Mad, John, or aka Johnny Moore, uh, from Garda, from yeah. being a police officer in Ireland for nine years. Wow. And we're going to get into that in just a little bit. But before we do that, being that this is first episode of season one, excuse me, season two, why don't we do a cheers? We're yeah. here. Joe, raise up your glass behind the camera. Let's do a cheers. <laughs> cheers. cheers. Cheers to season two. Hopefully, Slaughter. this is going to be a good one. What is, how, what is it? Slauncha, guys. Slauncha. There you go. Slauncha. All right. <sighs> That's my German days. Every time you cheer prost, you tap. All right. There we go. <clears throat> All right. So with no further ado, let's jump right into it. Yeah. Johnny, tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, and then we'll get into uh, you know your time as a police officer over across the pond in Ireland. Okay. Um, well, welcome to Fifth and Mad, first and foremost, guys. I appreciate you coming. Thanks um, for having us. This is my first podcast, so I'm excited, nervous. I don't know what else, but uh, <laughs> let's see how it goes. So, yeah, um, I'm from a place called Limerick, County Ireland, in County Limerick in Ireland. Uh, I'm 36. I'm here almost eight years. Uh, before that, in a different world, I was a police officer for nine years in a place called Ennis County Clare. Um, took a career break, which was a rare thing in the police force they don't happen very often i came here to do a three months sabbatical vacation almost move on to supposed to move on to dubai to to, to go down the line of private security mm. that kind of yeah. executive protection and um somehow managed working in the bar and now i own the bar and run the bar and the rest is history i guess that's it. That's awesome. Now, when you came <laughs> over here for that three months, were you going to travel all over the United States um, and then just wound up staying here in New York or what? So I'm going to give you like a serendipity movie story now. So basically, <laughs> I came here for three months to move to live with my girlfriend at the time who was in Dubai as a flight attendant. Okay. That was the whole purpose behind it. She had to do two more years there. So I was going to stop here three months, have a vacation for myself, yeah. and then go to Dubai and work for a couple of years. So she came here, took her to... Uh, Central Park and the nice horse carriage ride, all the dramas with now. And we went to the plaza for afternoon tea. And then I went to the Highline walkway and I got dumped. Oh, so, no uh, way. That yeah. day? That day. I'm a Highline. Oh, oh, no, she no. waited until after you spent all that money. Oh, yeah. yeah right up there. Oh, right? man. Got dumped. So, um, what a bitch. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Thank you for saying that. Yeah. So, that was that. So, that was my kind of, okay, shit moment. I'm like, well, what am I going to Dubai for now? I'm like, I'm... So I actually went back home. I think my grandfather died around that time. He did. And I went back home for the funeral. And I'm like, what am I going to do now? I want to go back to Dubai. I have no reason to. So yeah. I'm like, let me go back to New York. I actually was going to go back to the police force. And I was like, you know what? Let me just go back to the police force. I, I enjoyed it. I loved it. You know, I didn't leave it for a career break because I was unhappy. I left it just because of my situation. Right, that's it for her, essentially. And for her, essentially, and for myself to go down this yeah, You get situation. a chance to travel at your age yes. and come to New York City. to Dubai also. Yeah, like yeah. Dubai, Dubai's New York awesome. City, all that. It was great, I mean, exactly. On, yeah. And it was my first, I joined very young at 19, so I didn't get to travel like the usual kids do, the J1 visas or whatever. Yeah. So I'm like, let me take advantage of this. Didn't work out for me. Um, so I'm like, let me go back to New York one more time. Well, I'll, let me give this another go. So I went back. I was working like these celebrity catering events and parties and bartending, I hadn't bartended any of this stuff. And then I was up in the Upper West, Upper West Side having a drink on a Monday night once in a bar called Bourbon Street. And my guys might have been in there. It was a real fireman cop yeah. bar. And yeah. the ex-owner was a cop. Yeah. Jason. So he said, have a drink. I said, okay, let me have a drink. He says, oh, you're looking for a job? And I says, no, I'm not really. I'm just doing this catering stuff and easy. And that was it. And he said, oh, I'm looking for a guy to kind of take over and run this place. So I'm like, all right, I can do it. 
I had no clue what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. Why not? It was a small, it was like the ultimate dive bar now. This was shitty dive bar. Yeah. Like, I love shitty dive yeah, bars. Yeah, I don't blame me. It was, like this yeah. was no doors in the bathroom. Just, like it was a <laughs> shit. I don't like that necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> you know, only on Saturday you nights. Need a, yeah. You need a shot after this place. But um, we had all the bras on the bar. Like you get the girls go take off their bras, give them free shots. It was nice. like, it was insane. Now I did that for about 12 months. Um, Thankfully, only 12 months because I would have died if I lasted any longer. That was a tough lifestyle. That was true bartending, drinking, too much partying, right? So he stopped paying his lease for six months prior, which I didn't know. And mm. then one day, like, someone comes in, uh, maybe a city person, I don't know what they were, tax man or something, she was something in front of me, you're being shut and she was there. And this was like a fighter. So Jeez. I was like, all right, that's it, done. Um, so then this is Fifth and Mad. A lady who was running Fifth and Mad had it for 10 years. I, I got a call literally on, a, on the Saturday day after that was all done and said, there's an Irish lady looking for an Irish guy to run and front her business here in New York, but she wants an Irish guy to do it. I said, okay. So I came and met her, tough lady, Emer Kama is her name. She says multiple bars and restaurants in New York. She's a very smart lady and my, like was my teacher, still is. And we sat, had a conversation. She showed me her books and I'm looking at these going, this was another level now. This was corporate stuff, nothing that I'd ever done before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm way out of my depth here now, way out of my depth. She's like, what do you think? I'm like, yeah, no problem. I can do it. And I said some stupid money that I wanted. And she's like, oh, I don't know you. I'm not going to give you that now. I'm like, well, that's what I'm worth. I'm not worth half of that. <laughs> so I'm like, she goes, you're very confident. I go, yeah, because I know what I'll bring you. And I, and, and I didn't know what I could bring her, but I knew I'd give everything, you know? And so I went away, came back, I met her in the following week and so shook hands and no, she paid you the stupid money? She didn't pay me the stupid oh. money. No, 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 she didn't at all. She said to me, cleverly, she said, okay, well, give me, do a year, see what you can do, and then we'll talk. Hmm. So I said, fair. So I gave her a year of my life and everything 24-7 here and worked out. And now, what, seven years later, um, I'm part owner with her and it's all... Well, it's the see, American man. dream. I was just going to say, it's like the American dream. <laughs> yeah, that's maybe, great. Like, that's yeah. the American dream. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's awesome. And again, you know, we can't thank you enough. We can't thank uh, Tracy enough. Yeah, yeah. And we'll kind of get into that a little bit, I think, okay. maybe towards the end of how yeah. we, we connected with you in the first Perfect. place. Yeah. Um, but again, for those of you that, that are listening, for watching, if you're in the New York area, when you're here in New York City, come and patronize Fifth and Mad. Yeah. They're true supporters of law enforcement, true supporters of first responders, and the food's amazing. The drinks are, are, are delicious and the decor is phenomenal. So why not come here? Yeah. Right. Yeah, so absolutely. a little yeah. plug for you guys. I appreciate that. Thank you guys. Yeah. Um, and of course, what's the, uh, when, when you were, you know, a teenager before yeah. you became a police officer, yeah. was that something you always wanted to do? You always wanted to be, a, um, well, do you know, I, I went to a boarding school. I played a lot of rugby back at home. My dad was a, a rugby player and he went to this boarding school. So I went there at 12 and I was in boarding school from 12 to 18. And I said, like 18 years of age, it was time to go to college. And a lot of colleges, everyone goes to college really in Ireland after, college, after school. Like, it's not like here. It's, it's free, so it's not like crazy stuff. Right. Um, but I just didn't want to do it. And in that year, I applied for the cadets, which is an officer in the army in Ireland, say, and the police force. And I didn't have any real love for anything before that, but... I got it. I was only 17 that time. And then I did, so I was 18. I got the police force and I'm like, yeah, let me take it. And I took it and I absolutely loved it. Um, from day one, even like I was only nine, 20, say going into the police academy. And it was very surreal for some people who were sent to a police academy, like almost like a boarding school aspect, yeah. but I came six years of boarding school. So to me, it was boarding school with drink girls and <laughs> money you know yeah. so it was and train in the gym all day and train all day. so <laughs> right, it was right, like right. and i played i was decent at rugby so i played on the irish police team in rugby and so i was picked for that and so i got to travel england scotland wales wow, france cool. wow. so it was like my dream it was literally a boarding school with everything else i couldn't do when i was there so i i settled in very quickly to it and i enjoyed it you know i must say i love every bit of it it never even people say, oh, I hated the college. I'm like, I love the college, you know? And then I qualified and I went down the street and I, I love the streets. You know, I, I wanted to be on the streets all the time. I did not want to be in the office. The crazier you put me in, the better I wanted to be. You know, I wanted to be out there with the public order stuff after the nightclubs with the crazy Irish fellas beating each other up and yeah. me in the middle of them, pulling them apart. It's kind of what you think hear about when you think it's, about, you know, the bars sometimes in Ireland, yeah. there's a lot of, uh, it's exactly that. Brawling. It's, brawling it's exactly that. And yeah. it's, it's surreal here, 
And if I was to say something and people, I get this question all the time here. How do you get into the bar business and when you were a cop? And my answer is the same every time. My nine years as a police officer gave me every skill and every attribute I needed to run this business. Because in my mind, it's the exact same. You put me on the street as a cop in uniform on a Saturday night outside the Queen's nightclub in Ennis, which was a nightclub. There were 700 kids that go in there. And when they'd come out, you'd close the door and come out. You're dealing with drunk guys. You're using your conflict resolution skills. You're sure. empathetic on the staff. It's the exact same thing as what I'm doing now is what I'm doing then. With my own staff, I'm leadership skills. You know, I learned from sports. And I learned yeah. from dealing with cops. So it's people ask that question all the time. I go, I couldn't do it only my training from the police. So mm. I credit everything that I, the man I am today yeah. from the skills I learned in the nine years of the police force. And I always say that to everyone who asks me. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. I think the same thing kind of goes for here in the U.S. I think a lot of retirees going into the bar business when they get out. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it happens all the time. Yeah. You know, guys will, will get together and they'll say, hey, you know, we just retired. What do, you want, what do we want to do? They have, I don't want to say an influx of money, but they have maybe some extra spending cash. They throw it together and they, a lot of them seem to open bars together or they go into the private security business working at bars yeah. or, you know, being a private partner in a bar. It, it happens all the time. It, mm -hmm. And I think you're right because it goes hand in hand. Yeah. You're learning all these amazing skills from the police academy and you know, really on the street more than anything. Yeah. yeah. And you use it here at, at probably really for any business. Right. Bars yeah. just kind of go hand in hand with being law enforcement because we tend to also drink a lot, which is, that's a whole no, no, another story. Yeah, that's another uh, story. Whether sure. it be good or bad to talk about, but um, yeah. what what are the differences? I, I, being a cop in Ireland, mm -hmm. working the bar scene, and then coming over to the U.S., I know a lot of the times people say that the U.S. police especially are more militarized than in other countries. And I know in, in Ireland, you know, we always see like the cartoons and we see TV shows of Irish cops and they're walking around. They got the funny uniforms on. They don't have guns first off. Mm -hmm. um, but I know the murder rate in some parts of Ireland is, is pretty high. Yeah. Um, it's first of all, it's a huge difference, I would think. And I would tell that to anyone. But. When I was growing up in the early noughties, like zero seven, zero six, that Limerick, when my city was, had a really bad name of like Stab City. There was a gangland feud in Limerick in that time. Hmm. It was the first time I think my area ever saw violence to that extent. Drugs, weapons, guns, murders. You know, it was, it got out of control. It was, um, so that was the first time I think Ireland and my area was exposed to that level of crime, you know? In general though, like, it's so different because the situation is so different. Like as, as we spoke just before we came on and I think there's 10,000 police officers in the whole country of Ireland. Wow. And you have- There's more than that in this city. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's a, so that alone means when you get out of that squad car or that patrol car, your attitude has to be different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't have a gun number one, right? You don't have backup like you would have. Like I'll give you a story. I had one, a murder arrest say in my time as a police officer, right? And it came on a Monday night and I was driving around with this, my partner, Nadine, blonde girl, small, petite blonde girl. And we're driving around. We go to a dispute in a, we call them housing estates. I don't know what's the similar here. There's like a bunch of houses in, in an estate. If you drive in, it could be 10 different houses. Yeah, like a, like a, like a housing complex. Or yeah. Yeah, housing yeah. Com yeah, like you said there. Now, yeah. So we go there. We got the call. We went there, me and her. And it was two local brothers who were always in trouble. Alcoholics, gypsies, travelers, we call them. Drinking in this bar with a Polish non-national and a, and a couple of guys drinking. So we got there, they saw us, they run back in, close the door. They're like, whatever, go fuck yourselves, finger out, you know warrant. You're not, you're just gonna say, guys, keep it down. And that's it, yeah. we drove away. Literally 10 minutes later, we get a call from the 999 saying, sorry, 999 is like, you're 911. Right. So we get the 999 call, go back there, uh, there's a suspect someone's dead in there. So we knew exactly where, I knew exactly where it was, who it was, so we got back there. Me and her drove into the into the entrance of the estate and a car was coming against us. It was the two brothers' sister driving the car. And I just pulled the car slightly in front of her. Now she could have drove around it, but she didn't. She was probably stressed too. I get out of the car and I remember getting out of the car and the two brothers would be, I was, I'm six foot six now, right? So I was six, six foot six then too. I didn't grow anymore, but <laughs> I used to be probably 30 pounds heavier because I played rugby and I was in very, I was in good shape. So. But in Ireland, when I got out of that car, it wasn't, I knew that it was, I had to act a certain way to keep them there. And as I got out of the car, I remember leaning my hand through the, the car key, pulling the car keys out of the, of the ignition, 
she, and the two brothers behind her is banging her seat going, just drive, just drive. And then Darren gets out of the car, he won the younger brother on the right hand side. And I remember saying to him, I just walked around him and how I had to deal with it was, I used my size and my presence, which I never really had to do in Ireland, thankfully. But I stood over him and said, if you run, I'm going to break your fucking jaw. And that was it. I didn't have a gun to set freeze or any of that. I right. said that to him. No, if him and his brother got out of the car and decided to jump me and it's me and my little partner who's five foot five, we're not going to go anywhere here. Let's be real. What tools do you have on you at the time? Um, I have pepper spray and an asp, um, a magnetic asp. Uh -huh. Now, the pepper spray just came in around that time. So before we used to have a wooden baton, that was it. Wow. Now, in saying that, of my nine years in the cops, I never used my pepper spray. I used my baton once, and that wasn't for a person. That was probably to break a window, I think. Um, very much hands. You had that respect in Ireland with the criminals and us. Like if someone criminal, rarely it happened, you know? And if it did, and it'd get rough sometimes, you'd give them a few digs, and it was almost, you know, I deserved it. Okay, right. we got it. We were, that was that mutual respect there. Right. Um, obviously here, that it's crazy what I see here, what you got to deal with. It's on another complete different level. So our communication skills, our presence, our charisma was huge for us mm -hmm. as a cop. And I think the most successful cops in Ireland, especially, are the ones who have those skills. Do you think that that, and I, yeah. I, I know the answer, but I want to yeah. hear from you, would translate well here in the United States, that skill set that you just talked I about? I think that it's something that, I don't know, are you taught that or would definitely, I would definitely preach it, yeah. but I think that what you're dealing with is on another level. I think it's, yeah, we, it's, it's, it's so very difficult to have that they, level. They have training now. I know you've been out for quite a while. In the academies, they, they were, current officers are sending back to the academy. New recruits are getting the training now on like de-escalation tactics. And they're, 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 well, they're harping on it more yeah. now than yeah, it, sure. you yeah. know, over the, since like 2014 and onward, right? right? Especially since 2020, it's really been like a, mm -hmm. you know, a thing. It's, it's, it's the flavor of the month per se. Sure. But as, as Johnny was saying, the problem I think with, with the United States is that we're obsessed with weapons. Yeah. Firearms in particular. 100%. Yeah. So, you know, no matter how much you talk to somebody, which of course talking, you know, and having the gift of gab is an unbelievable tool to have. Mm -hmm. But when you're dealing with somebody who is emotionally disturbed or intoxicated or just a bad person in general and they have access to, to fi a firearm, yeah. this I mean, well, most so of the problems that you run do. into here with weapons, though, are not from the legal gun owners. They're oh, no, from of course. the illegal, right. the people who have illegal gun. Now, no. certainly yeah, no, there no, are the, times where a legal gun is taken from a parent and gone to school right. shootings and stuff. Yeah, you yeah. Know, but, but most of the time, you know, it's yeah. a stolen firearm It's or it's a ghost gun nowadays with these 3D printed weapons. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. however they're getting their hands on their guns. I mean, there's just a significant amount of firearms in the United States as opposed to other parts of the world, like Ireland, like where it's probably I, not that I many. I guess, like, for you guys, uh, it's, it's I kind of surreal for me to think of it because when I got, like, that, just go back to that example. When I got out of that car, the last thing in my mind was they had a weapon. You know, that was the last thing in my mind. All my only thing was, is he going to run? Am I going to have to tackle him? Am I going to have to rough him up to hold him in that position? Because I knew my, small as my town is, that town of Venice, I think it's like 30,000 something people lived there, right? I knew getting out of that car that the fastest relief I can going to get is going to be five minutes. And there's probably two detectives working and two more cops. So that's uh, all six people in to do 36,000 people. Yeah. So I knew that we have to rely on those skills because if it turned into a brawl or thing, we're going to lose in the police force in Ireland. Like we'll go every time if you turn into that, we will lose. We're here. Like I even see it here when the cops come here to the nightclub, like they'll pull up with six cars deep yeah. or nothing. And I'm like, Oh my God, you embarrassed me. I think it's a, if that was in Ireland, they'd be a murder. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, well, it amazes me that you, when you say that the, the last thing on your mind yeah. right, was there was a, if there was a weapon in that car, well, yeah. that's the, First thing, oh, yeah, exactly. That's is there I said a weapon that. in that car? Yeah. yeah, that's the last thing in my mind. My mind was just, how am I going to keep them here? What, what, they committed a murder. How did they kill the person? Um, they were the same guy. They were waving out the window at me two minutes earlier when we before we we got there first. Then we left. He obviously told him leave, and the two brothers said we're not leaving. And they started punching him, and then there was a, a knife in the kitchen knife, and he stabbed him once in the ribs uh, in here, and it killed him. Once that. Now, yeah. to this day, the younger brother took. The older brother took the rap for the murder, but I, without any doubt, it was a younger brother. Like I, I, I yeah. knew the two brothers, yeah. but he just took that in their gen, in their culture. They were gypsies, so that was he did that for him. Okay. They both went yeah. to jail, obviously. But um, 
in my heart and soul, I don't think they meant to murder him, right? It, it's not like, it wasn't that, but they obviously, the stab wound, they were yeah. reckless to it and they did. And yeah. that's paid the price for it. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's surreal. And so when a firearm offence happens in Ireland, it's like shock. The whole country was in every paper, but it has gotten, like you alluded to it earlier, I had the Limerick drug few when I was a cop, now went to Dublin. You now you see Dublin guys, I think they got arrested. Um, FBI is arresting them. They're dealing that much money in drugs. They're becoming typhoons of the, of the criminal, their most wanted guys, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's, there's still no weapons in Ireland. Now we have armed support units that go around, but I think the longer you keep away from that, the less chance you have escalating to the level of policing that you have to do here or in other countries of the world, you yeah. know? What about um, domestic terrorism? I mean, I know that back in the day, right, like mm-hmm. the 80s, yeah. 70s, the 70s, even in the early 90s, mm-hmm. I mean, domestic terrorism in Ireland was like, that was the thing, right? Yeah. Um, how, what is it like now and how, how are you trained to, to handle things like that? So there's two forces in Ireland. There's on Garda Síochána is Republic of Ireland. And then up north, where the country is divided between Protestant and Catholic, there's a police force called the PSNI. So they're a mix of Catholic and Protestant police officers. Some will consider themselves English and some will consider themselves Rep- Irish. Up there, that's a whole different level. You know, that's, I, I got some exposure to it because I was picked on the Irish police team. So every year the Irish police team was picked in rugby of the Garashi Connor and the PSNI. So we had to play together, which in the eighties would have never happened because we hated each other, right? Because of culture and religion, yeah. right? Yeah. But now obviously we were building bonds and it was great. And these guys were great. These guys were great. But their mentality was so different to ours. After a game, we'd all get their shirts and ties, right? We all want to wear them because we want to walk into the bar all matching. So all the <laughs> girls would come over and give us attention, right? That yeah. was our mentality coming from the Irish police. Mm-hmm. The PSNI guys, the minute the game was over, our banquet was over, they took off their ties. They didn't want to be known as cops anywhere because they were so paranoid in their own, in like Belfast and Northern Ireland, that if they were seen like that, it could be shot, murdered, killed, you know? Wow. And that's the difference of levels. Jeez. And the, the paranoia, like... I remember speaking to guys who were in the, the armed support units in the Northern Ireland Police. Like and they, those guys were, they're like something you'd see out of like Navy SEALs, you know, they're that level. Like he said, when they would drive into their police stations, they wouldn't indicate. They just turn because if they indicated, they would take a picture of their squad, of their personal vehicle and go, that's a cop. Now, and who's, who's committing this domestic? Like you're mixing, you're doing the terrorists, you're doing like between IRA guys and you're doing it with the loyalists from England, you know, the right. two groups. Okay. You're dealing with two factions up there. Is it, co- is it still like that? Um, not to that level. It was bad, what, 70s, 80s? 70s, was 80s bad. was when the yeah, IRA was and, and the remember, loyalists was going. I was stationed in, in yeah. Europe over in the 80s and I remember, yeah. you know, in Germany and in, you know, Germany, there was bombs going off everywhere. everywhere yeah. There was yeah. domestic terrorists It was crazy everywhere. then, yeah. The Republic of Ireland, thankfully, we don't have it. It, to that extent, like there's a there's a county called Loud, and that's the border county. So you get a lot of the criminals from Dublin, or criminals from Northern Ireland coming into Dublin, robbing banks, and then jumping the border. So if you were got stations in Dundalk County, Loud, that was like a the Wild West because yeah. it's the borderline. You know, <laughs> right, you're literally right, right. car yeah. chases every night. Yeah, you're you're dealing with Northern Ireland, Irish. That gives us crazy. Yeah. But what what yeah. is the actual border like? <sighs> There is none. You know, okay. it's not like yeah, yeah. it's not like you think it is here, where the the Mexican border or down. Yeah, it's, it's just a road. Okay, and it's a signpost. Oh, so, it, so it's not it's not guarded. It's just not guarded. there'll be checkpoints. Mm-hmm. Um, some armed, some not. Right, army we do, it, but not in any level like you might think. Right, back then in the eighties, yeah, it was great, but now, no, it's not like that. Um, t- in, thankfully, I guess. Well, right, you know, yeah. thankfully, yeah, 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 so, for sure. Yeah. Um. I want to uh, I want to talk about you. You had mentioned a story um, before we came on on the yeah. air. You said when when you first came over to the U.S., you took part in a parade. Mm-hmm. I want to kind of talk about that yeah. story because I think this is quintessential when we think the Puerto uh, Rican Day Parade. Is <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Puerto Rican Day Parade. Um, a lot of Irish, ten, uh, you know, tend tend to it each year. Yeah, it, it was the uh, I'm assuming the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Yes, correct. And I mean the St. Patrick's Day Parade, in New York City, probably one of the Funnest days of the year, especially being in law enforcement, mm-hmm. um, there are certain details that we within 
my agency look forward to. And yeah. then there's some that we don't look forward to, right? Sure. And I would say St. Patrick's Day is probably one of the, the funner days of, of the year for us to work. Um, every year, I've done, I've done that parade many of times uh, over my nearly nine years on the job now. And uh, a lot of guys from Ireland come over every year specifically just for the parade because it's that fun of a time. So I kind of want to hear your story about when you came over. Yeah, I came, I can remember like it was yesterday. I can't still believe it's been so long. Um, it was the 14th of March I came and I was coming here to move here basically for three months, right? And But I had a group of friends from my station were coming to march in the parade. So there was a bunch of us going to be here on that weekend. So every year in Ireland, it's a whole thing that there's always a bunch of cops from bunches of stations that go to New York for the parade. So we're all super excited about it. Get dressed up in our- no, I, before, I just ahead. want to interrupt you one second. Is is the same hoopla in Ireland that we have here for the whole St. Paddy's Day? The uh, just, yes, it, the parade obviously not as as outstanding as you guys, right. but every little town will have a parade. Okay. And our boys just get so drunk and get the shit out of each other. <laughs> and yeah. yeah. So you, you know what you, you, know you yeah. say? You like to work that? Yeah. yeah. You don't want to work in Ireland. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, two gotcha. days in Ireland you don't want to work. You don't want to work um, St. Paddy's Day. You don't want to work Boxing Day or St. Stephen's Day. The right, day right. after Christmas. Because yeah. it's just the mayhem. <laughs> now, like that here, you, like it's different, but in a good way too. But I came here, uh, you get a fair sense of pride, I think, when you come here from Ireland and walk in the parade. And I remember we're getting dressed up in their formal, we came down, had a drink, and everyone's talking to you and having a good time. And we marched in the parade, and it was it was great. I was so, and I went down to the pier. I had to watch the everyone goes down there. We yeah. had the drinks, and then back up to um, the mean fiddler and all the mm -hmm. Irish bar. Yep, every, yep. Everyone goes there first, and they move here. And we had a great time, and giving your hat to every. Tom, Dick, and Harry, or a girl who wants in your gloves, and you use any weapon you have to use to get some attention. <laughs> I guess, right? But um, yeah, it was a great day, and I think. It, I understand what you're saying, how it makes you feel good too, because you can see the respect that day for law enforcement, first responders, yeah. firemen. And that's that's nice because when I see you guys here, you have a tough time here, man. It's like when I when even when the cops come here to me over the years, if I have like a crazy wild late night party, um, you know, I can see like I I'd be trying to talk to them normally first and then I'll use my little knowledge of being a cop sometimes just to throw a little dig in them and go I don't bullshit me too much now because I know what you're saying I just for my own self yeah. but like, like you know it's 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 a different world how you police police here and how we got the police in Ireland. You know? So you know what's crazy though? You you, you say it's a different world, yeah. which it is, right? The 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 the, the nine one one calls or nine 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 calls yeah. that you, yet you respond to might be different, but at the same time very similar. Right? I'm sure there's a lot of domestic. There's mm -hmm. a lot of uh, you know fights and yeah whatever it is. Even though there's so many differences, though, you know, between the uniform, the weaponry, mm -hmm. the whatever. If I were to go to Ireland right now, mm -hmm. I get on a flight, go to Ireland, and I bring a patch with me, and I show up to a bar or I show up to the police station, and I show them my patch or my, my badge or my ID, we're family. Well, especially NYPD. I mean, uh, well, yeah. I mean, so, but, I mean, the NYPD is, is known worldwide. But, yeah, but any, sure, yeah, right. if, you, if you were to do it, if Joe Schmo from the tiniest agency yeah. in middle America mm -hmm. were to go to Ireland or England mm -hmm. or France, any Germany, Germany, yeah, yeah. and there's that instant connection yeah, because we all know what we've been through. Universal. Again, the the call type might be different. The way that you're treated, what you wear, it could mm -hmm. all be different. But yeah. you're st the, bare, brotherhood, the, the brotherhood, the brotherhood, the bare remains. bones, you're mm -hmm. a police officer yeah. throughout the world. And I, I, think, I think the same probably goes for firefighters and mm -hmm. maybe paramedics. And I got to be honest with you. I mean, we may look at the country differently when we look think of uh, for Russia, mm -hmm. but the police officers in Russia would bond with you just the same because they're dealing with the same shit that we're yeah. dealing with every day. Yeah. I don't plan on going to Russia though. Uh, but you know what? But I've met some I've met some yeah. Russian police officers yeah. through the years, and it's the same thing. I mean, there is that bond. You yeah, cannot you. escape it. Doesn't yeah. matter where they're from. You may yeah. not agree with the with the the government of that country, but mm -hmm. the cops are cops. Yeah, yeah. you're right. You're yeah, right. Like we can sit here like the three of us and I guess you can chomp up stories, as you said. You've all been through the same shit. Yeah. yeah. Whether it's on a level where you're dealing with bullets being thrown at you or you're dealing with a frying pan being thrown at you. Yeah. You know, we can all relate to that, I guess. Sure. Yeah. And I think you're right. That's it's it's and that's a nice part of it, that brotherhood. You know, in Ireland it's it's a funny thing like there's not much perks in the job in Ireland and, and so my colleagues, my ex colleagues tell me now it's less and less, you know. But we still had that innocence of the culture. I mean, you'd flash the badge and get into the nightclub for free. And yeah. you know, that was that was our perks. Or yeah. you know, and, and you like in Ireland, I don't always like here, but 
the farmer's daughter would like to f- marry a guard or like mm-hmm. to be with a guard or a cop because it was a pinchable job and yeah. he's a solid guy. And I, I think there's a lot of badge bunnies out there. Yeah, oh, it's still the same. Here. Here. It's, yeah, it's, it's, he, I don't know what you call a guy who chases a female cop. I don't know. I know. Yeah. Uh, is there a word it's for not it? a badge bunny. He's uh, a badge. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. not, nowadays, they can be whatever they want. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's a guy. doesn't matter. He's, he, she, she, <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't woke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do have a question, though. Yeah. Is the same... And I, when I say brotherhood, sisterhood, right? Mm-hmm. Is is the same f- family sense in Ireland like it is here in the United States between police officers? Um, yeah, I, I would say hundred percent. Yeah, like there's a there's a nightclub in Dublin in Ireland, and they, if you ever go to Ireland, you got to go to this nightclub. So it's it's known all over, and it's called Copper Face Jacks. Okay, and it was it's that's an ex- a cool name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's an ex cop and an ex nurse. Okay, well, and, oh, just yeah. like in the U.S., yeah. hand to hand, hand to yeah. hand, right? Yeah. So they opened it, and if you're a cop or a nurse. This is a, there's a line for this nightclub. And this nightclub is not like any nightclub in New York. This nightclub is everyone lines up, male or female. You pay your $20 to get in. You get drunk and do whatever you want in there. Like hold some good old school fun. And if you're a cop or you're not, you can bring up your badge, skip the line, and you can bring in one buddy with you. Nice. And he does that oh, we're to this going. day. We're going to have a podcast yeah. copper at Copper Jacks. Face Jacks. Co- copper, copper Face Jacks. Jacks. Give that them, is hey, give man, them They don't that. even need a plug. Copper Face Jacks, if you're listening, and we know you are, yeah, yeah. You, should, you should host us. And yeah. send us t-shirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. send us t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a great time. We want to go do a podcast at Copper Face Jacks. Absolutely. How cool would that That would be cool. So the reason I bring this up, I recently had the uh, ability, uh, the NYPD softball team Mm -hmm. uh, hosted an event, which my organization, Law Enforcement Officers Weekend, was part of, uh, to raise money for the families of officers Rivera and Mora that were murdered (laughs) earlier this year in the line of duty. And as part of the the softball tournament, they had teams from across New York area. But what also happened is that a team from uh, uh, Great Britain actually came, which is really awesome. So they were a mix of the Royal Air Force and police officers in Great Britain. Uh, they came and they participated in the event. And then after the event was over, they came up to us and we had we had bagpipes from the Port Authority Police Department. We had the national anthem singer from the NYPD. I mean, we had a, a flyover from from Nassau County Police. I mean, there was all this like really cool police stuff going on throughout the entire day. The, um, our emergency uh, services unit, the SWAT team came with, with the, the trucks and the horses were there, and the canine. So they came up to me and they were like. This would never happen in England. They were like, we have somewhat of that family brotherhood bond, but what you're doing here, and this was for us, this is a small event. Yeah. They were like, we've never seen anything to this scale in, in England. Uh, they were like, if you go from one county to another in, in England, and if, if you're like, oh, hey, I'm a police officer, like they were like, well, they don't typically care. Mm-hmm. And I, I think in the US, we we take it to the next level. I think we, I think we do because of of the stuff that we deal with that's different than what you might deal with overseas. Yeah. Stuff. No, that, absolutely. There are murders and things that happen overseas. But when you talk about, I, I would guarantee I may be wrong, but I would say the whole of Europe probably has less murders than Chicago has. A hundred percent. Yeah. You're New probably York City right about has that. in a year. Yeah, I, well, I should, would say, we should I mean, run the stats on that. I'm curious. Yeah, so that's, actually. that's how I say that we take it to a next level. Cause we're dealing, we're in the shit all the time time yeah. it doesn't matter if you're small town big town you know new york city or small town uh, suburban new jersey you're in the shit all the time every time you stop a car your first thought is is there a gun in that car yeah or he's you know he's knows there's a murder and he's not thinking that. <laughs> right no, yeah. i'm yeah. not saying that, that it's any less because it's the same danger you're facing the same mm-hmm. dangers but um i just think that we take it to another level because we recognize and yeah and, and you know, but i just said about the english thing that you're right on that because they're all different Police state, they're, they're different um, counties, different things. And I think that's what relates with NYPD and Angara Shikana is you're one monster police force. Right. And in Ireland, we're one monster police force. Even yeah. though it's 10,000, it's just one force. So if I'm from County Limerick and you're from County Dublin, we still have that bond just like the NYPD guys because it's the same force. Yeah. We wear the same uniform. We deal with the same bosses that have to do the same stuff that we mm-hmm. cut our overtimes and all that stuff. So that bond is there because I have played with the Irish police in the rugby and we'd go to France and play the French police and we'd play the English police and we play the Scottish or the combined forces of Britain of firemen and cops. And I will say that our bond was definitely more than theirs. Yeah. To jump on yours. Yeah. Because they didn't have they had they were from different police forces where we had that bond on Garda Shiakana, different to what the other ones have. Mm. So I would I would back you on that and agree with you. And I, I probably I think I'm I'm pretty safe to say that the NYPD and 
and Garda, I think where probably the two closest national agencies uh, that connect with one another as opposed to probably any other agency in, in the world. Yeah, I would say you're yeah, right. It's, I, I it's sure. just, I think because the history of New York with well, the Irish. Because mm-hmm. the Irish came here and yeah. became coppers. Yeah, yeah. Right. coppers. Yep. So, yeah. yeah, no, I agree with you on that. Even like there's, there was a Jerry McCabe was a, he was murdered by the IRA times from a, a cop back in the eighties. And there's a sponsorship here in New York. It's called the McCabe thing, I think it is. And it's in, NYU and it comes here to learn policing and it's an right. Irish cop gets a scholarship every year for it. So there's so that's much awesome. stuff yeah, involved awesome. in MIPD and I mean, be- yeah. because at the time nobody wanted to be a cop. No. Nobody. That was not a prestigious job at all. Mm. And the Irish came over here and they said, you know, we'll do it. You know what this this top right now is, is giving me flashbacks of the movie um Gangs of New York. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I fucking love that movie. It's a good movie. I, it's a good movie. I could watch that movie every day. Yeah. And it's it's such a good movie. And they they highlight that. They highlight yeah. the police force, they highlight the the, uh, the fire department yeah. and how it's comprised of all Irish. Yeah. And and they essentially built New York. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah for sure. It, the bond is definitely there. Yeah. yeah so Johnny, uh, mm. when, when you came over to the U S and you know, you were kind of deciding what you were going to do. Yeah. Did you ever think about becoming a police officer here? Um, well, I, first of all, I couldn't because I was on a career break for three years. So after the three years I had to go back or I had to resign. Now, I don't know. I don't think I could legally have done it unless I, when I didn't, when I chose not to go back then, I had to just start from scratch. So honestly, I didn't think about ever joining the police force here because do you know how I felt with it? I felt the nine years I had as a police officer, I loved it. I learned so much from it and my skills and it definitely developed me into the person I was. And now I wanted to move on to my next chapter. Yeah, you did your time. I did my time. And even though it wasn't a long time compared, like in Ireland, we do 30 years, not you do 20 here, right? Uh, between 20 and 25, yeah, depends. So we do 30 or to 55 or 60, I think it was. Yeah. So I could, I could have retired at 50 because I joined young. Um, but I just felt this, it was something new for me now. And let me move on to the next one. And that's all. But I always stress to people, oh, you quit the guards. No, I didn't quit the guards. I, I loved it. I just, my circumstances took this career break to take it as an opportunity. And then it just worked out for me. Yeah. And I am where I am now. But like, as I say, I always credit to it. I, I do miss it. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. I, still, I miss it. I retired I from it. it. I miss it every day. Listen, I remember Halloween in Ireland. Like, I remember being in the car and I'm with this guy from Kerry and we're like, we got a call to go to this small town. They're after breaking the windows of the police station, throwing stones and eggs. I remember us driving there and I'm like, right, when we get out of the car, we're going to drive straight at the, at the house. They're all going to run. We're going to chase them. I remember driving there. They all scatter like, and so we just chase him. I'm jumping over some lady's lawn. He lands. I give him a boot into the stomach. The lady <laughs> opens the door. I'm like, don't worry, ma'am. I'm just beating, I'm beating this guy up. Right? But like, we go home and we're laughing about it. It was just, it, that's the, the level. No, don't get me wrong. There's more serious instances that of course. Irish yeah, I don't sure. know I'm trying to paint it as a yeah, fun yeah, way. Yeah. But there was nights. And I still right. love that. Yeah. I go home. Like the difference in here, when I have a crazy night here with 600 people and it's intense, in this, when I'm in here trying to manage this situation, I'm not really enjoying it. I enjoy this part of my business. When I walk home at five in the morning, I go, that was a successful night. Yeah. Right. But when I was a cop, when I was in it, I loved it. Yeah. You know, the yeah. more, I remember like gypsies and travelers are crazy in Ireland. I'm sure you heard about them. Yes. And they'd always fight in. in Pinky blinders. Yeah. Taught same me all about thing. it. Like, same thing, right? It's insane. Like you, yeah. you, you could, I could write, and Ennis was a big town for travelers. And I used to love, I, I see, I'd get on with them. I'd walk into any gypsy site, no one laid a hand on me. They'd all know me. Oh, Johnny, what's up? We would have, and that was it, you know? Um, Cause I had that camaraderie with them. Mm-hmm. But I remember going to a, a call in a, in a graveyard and it was a, a funeral and two brothers attacked one guy, slashed him in bits. And I got out of the car and it was like a war scene. Everyone's jumping around, smashing cars, chopping each other up with machetes. And, and I remember one guy holding his hands in his face at that and I go, James, just, just let me look at you, buddy. And he's like down. And there's me, I'm going around me. No one laid a hand on me or any other cop there. They, they never overstepped that way. And he lifted up and his ears hanging off and he's like Freddy Cougar. Oh. And I remember turning around going, as a kid is on a car, smashing the car. And I remember going to Michael, who's the, the king of them. He's their father. I'm like, Michael, tell that little prick, stop breaking the car. And he, in the middle of this mayhem, fellas trying to chop him up. He's like, Jerry, get off the fucking car. <laughs> and that's like, that's TV Ireland show. in a, in a, in yeah, a yeah, nutshell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm crazy. I'm going to get a little heavy here. I am going to yeah, ask go. a heavy question. In, in the United States, the mm-hmm. police officers deal a lot with uh, PTSD. Okay. And there's a lot of suicides within the ranks. Mm-hmm. Is that a prevalent problem in, in the, with the Irish uh, police? Um, 
Well, in your answer, that's a good question because to, to answer the question before I get to the question, I did the best course I ever did as a police officer was a peer supporter course for my own people. Beautiful. It was, it was the best one I ever did. And I remember going into that course going, oh, what's this, another one of these bullshit courses. And within the first hour, I think everyone in the room cried. Detectives are 20, 30 years. And I was going, what the hell? This is deep, intense. And to this day, I love that I did that course because it opened up my eyes to all that stuff. So to answer your question, thankfully, it's not huge now. I'm out of it now eight years, right? So I don't know, has it got worse? But there definitely was an element of it. Um, but thankfully, I don't know. See, Irish people are very, were very within, withheld. So when I did that course, the, the psychologist said, when you call, say you went to the scene, uh, suicide. My job was to call you the day after, hey, Mikey, how are you, buddy? How are you feeling? And she said, an Irish person will give you two answers. I'm fine or I'm grand. Every time, no yeah. matter if they are not, they'll say those two words. And she was right. And she said, you leave them be. Go back there a week later, two weeks later, meet them for a coffee. So I think there was, it was coming into the police force in Ireland back then eight years ago. Prior to that, I don't think there was much support because the Irish mentality is, oh, have a drink and get over it. Yeah. Maybe it's the same here with cops, No, it right? is the same right? here. Have that's the culture, and okay. that's why you have that issue where, yeah. where cops are like, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, yeah. when they're not fine. And I think we're trying to change that culture. And I think in Ireland it was eight time. years ago. Yeah. Like, I always, I, th I think I was a good candidate for that course because I've had the suicides, and the I remember a suicide of a 21-year-old girl. I think I was 21 myself, and then cutting her down from a tree and carrying her through a forest. Mm -hmm. And being the same age and seeing all these things. And thankfully they never, I was able to separate work and my personal life. I never brought it home with me. And I've seen bad ones too. And it was, I was fine. But I remember going to an incident with one cop I worked with, because in Ireland you have a different partner every day. It's the same unit, but you swap around your partners. You know, yeah. he's not the same guy every day. And it was a great way because you always knew strengths and weaknesses from your partner. And I remember going to this just a sudden death, uh, suicide, right? Whatever it was, and going there. And I remember him saying to me, can you deal with that, John? I'll take all the notes, but I just don't want to do that. And I said, no problem, I got you. Let me deal with this side. So obviously he was someone who would not like that and it would affect him. But I think everyone's different and I think you're right. That support is huge and it should be pushed as much as you could, you know? Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah so, yeah. So <clears throat> before we end the podcast, um, yeah. I want to kind of talk real quick about how we actually ended up connecting in the first place, yeah. uh, because I think there's two individuals specifically that deserve a huge shout out. Mm -hmm. um, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, Eric Potts it. being one of them. <laughs> Eric, thanks for, thanks for being here. <laughs> Eric came um, for the Phoebe. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Irish whiskey. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Back in 2020, when COVID first hit the US and it was devastating, mm -hmm. at the same exact time as COVID's going down, uh, George Floyd occurs in Minneapolis. Right. And you have these massive riots that are taking place throughout the entire country. Peaceful demonstrations. These massive riots <laughs> are occurring throughout the entire country, especially here in, in the New York metropolitan area. And uh, the organization that we're all part of, Law Enforcement Officers Weekend, decided, well, we have to cancel most of our events because of COVID, but we knew we still wanted to do something. So we, we took to, to social media and we, we made a simple Facebook post and we said, hey, guys, we have an idea. We want to create a I guess we'll call it not an event, but we, we wanted to create like a, uh, a, a, a give a giving back where it's called Leo's feeding Leo's or law enforcement officers feeding law enforcement officers where we would spend X amount of dollars that we would raise to help bring hot food to different police departments throughout the tri-state area who are one dealing with COVID because nobody else is out on the streets except for first responders and two, they're dealing with the riots yep. and these guys and gals are working literally 24 seven sleeping at the commands at their precincts dealing with just craziness. So we put this post out, we raised a few thousand dollars and then it kind of went dead and we we're like, ah, shit. All right. And at the same time, I understand why, you know, people didn't want to spend money at the time. It was a crazy time. Nobody knew what the hell was going on. Then all of a sudden we get this message one day from a Instagram account called the St. James. The St. James is a restaurant located on Long Island in Mineola. And they said, hey, we saw your post. We want to help. That's all it said. And we reached back out to them and we met two unbelievable individuals, Tracy and Kiernan. Now, I know them as their last name as Flanagan because Tracy uses it as, as like a business name, but that's yeah. actually not their last name. Yeah. Tracy is Tracy Flanagan and Kieran is Kieran Keevney. Right. Yeah. 
And I've, I've known them both as, as the Flanagans for yeah, three yeah. years. I just recently found out that's actually not their last name. Yeah. <laughs> it threw me for a loop. But these two individuals approached us. We met with them at, at, at their restaurant bar in Mineola because they were actually closed at the time because of COVID. Yeah. And they said, listen, we have all this extra food in our freezer. We want to help you guys. Take as much as you want. Go out into the local community in Nassau County, Suffolk County, New York City, and start feeding cops. Uh, we thought, all right, we'll do it once or twice. We'll, we'll feed maybe a few hundred cops, and that'll be it. Fast forward nearly two and a half years later, Tracy and Kiernan and a few other people, but especially from the St. James restaurant, help us feed over 3,000 cops wow. in the tri-state area. And now, I'm not just in New York. I'm talking about parts of Maryland, parts of New Jersey, um, and, you know, upstate New York, of course, here in, in, in the tri-state area, many Police precincts in the in the NYPD, Nassau County, Suffolk County. We even fed the fire marshals. We fed uh, FDNY EMS. I mean, you know, these men and women of uh, the fire department, EMS, and, and the police department at this time were just so beaten and battered, dealing with thousands of dead bodies on the streets from COVID. You know, these crazy riots. You know, cops and and, and other first responders getting hurt left and right. Yeah. Having a hot meal, coming back to the precinct and having a hot meal sure. can mean so much to a first responder, more than anyone would really know unless you you yourself have, have dealt with that right. experience. And these two individuals help feed over 3,000 first responders. Wow. So we, uh, back in like uh, late 2021, early 2022, oh no, excuse me, late 2021, we actually made this huge plaque dedicated to them and every single agency that we donated to through uh, the St. James, we got their patch and we put it all along this, uh, this board with a big plaque in the middle, thanking them for their, uh, their sacrifice really, because I mean, imagine how much money that was. Yeah. I mean, tens of thousands, probably more than tens of thousands of dollars in food to help feed, feed all these, all these, uh, you know, officers and first responders. And, uh, Tracy has has the bar there. She's interconnected with you here yeah, at Fifth so and Mad. Tracy and Kieran, they're, they're first of all, they're great friends of mine. They're like my my mom and dad, dad in America. You know, we're we're that close. So Tracy, we were all close here. I remember when this happened, and Tracy was saying she was doing this, and I'm like, great, super idea. And Kieran and I remember going out there helping, packing the cars with them. And um, yeah, she's an amazing woman for doing all that. A lot of but she does it so willingly. It's, yeah. it's like she, it's, it's, it's I, super. I, I could have asked her for a million dollars and she would have yeah, given it to she's me. Like, it was she's like, no questions asked. Such a good soul. ask her for a million dollars <laughs> yeah, for me? Yeah, yeah, Tracy, <laughs> for me too. I, I know for a fact Tracy's going to listen to this because yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to send it to her. Tracy, we, I, I could use a million bucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, she's that good. Like Tracy, Kieran, they're just the most genuine They really are. Giving they people. truly, truly are. And um, we're friends, I guess. I, I play a little role in getting them into this bar business where they, I don't know, they kill me for it or not. I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, the St. James is, is turned into an amazing place. It really know? is. And they really have done so. They never did this business before mm -hmm. and they've fell to it like ducks, ducks to water. You know? It's beautiful. They have a great, they're just good people. Mm -hmm. And that's why they are there. And here, the connection is um, Kieran and Tracy are also partners here with us. Yeah. So when, when I needed help and I wanted somebody to come in with me, I'm like, guys, you want to come in? And they're, of course, John. And, and then, I trust them 100%. And We met you last year. Yep. So because of Tracy, mm -hmm. when we were working on building our Long Beach event, where we bring the families of injured officers to Long Beach, New York, all expenses paid, and we bring them into a night in New York City, Tracy found out about it and said, hey, listen, we want to help. We want to uh, allow you guys to have a delicious free dinner uh, on us. In New York City. So we went to the first bar last year, which it's was- called, It's a Mad Morton. It's in West Village. It's another one of the spots um, that we where we own. And yeah, again, Tracy brought you down there and she looked after everything and paid for like, as a sale. Yeah. I couldn't say any more good words about Tracy and And then Kieran. just a few weeks ago, we yeah. were here. And then you came we, here again. We, yeah. we came here with, with the, our, our third annual event. We had another five yeah. or six families. Yeah. And again, it was just, you guys have, have welcomed us and these families with just open arms, yeah. no questions asked. It's it's phenomenal. It's a, it's not even a partnership. It's it's a friendship. Yeah. It's really what it is. And um, it's really, you know, there's there's not many other, other individuals out there across the country that would do that. Right. You know, there's some corporate, the, here's the thing. There's so many corporations and businesses that are scared to do it they, they, they they've all gone woke yeah of they, they want everyone's to support afraid of everything Absolutely. everyone's yeah they, everybody wants to be on one side of 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 history and i think most of them are on the wrong side and i think we're, we're starting to see that um and i think there's gonna be a huge pendulum swing in the next few years mm -hmm. it's already started it's gonna swing back law enforcement is still a noble job it will always be a noble job it's gonna be a noble job come 
a few, a few years from now. And Tracy and, and, and Kiernan and Johnny and everybody who is incorporated in, into this partnership is on the right side of history and they're doing the right thing and they're supporting cops and they're supporting first responders. And again, I just want to give them a huge, huge shout out. I want to give you a huge That's shout it. out. Uh, this has been a really fun episode. Yeah. And it's uh, we, I thank you for hosting uh, us oh, and letting dude. us come nice. here to you. What a beautiful facility. Yeah. What a beautiful restaurant bar. What is this space used for? Because it's, it's amazing. It's, yeah, it can be used for anything. It's yeah, like, it's, I mean, it's amazing it's up here. 6,000 square feet. Look, we, we've done it. We had an Australian, 600 Australians here Friday night. We had Ohio State here, wow. University Saturday. We do corporate events. We do everything. Christmas parties, holidays parties. And I, I, I want to extend that to you guys. Any of you want to do parties or just law enforcement, you just hit me up. And let's I'm, party. Yeah, yeah, let's do and it. I got you. you know, and that's the way, like, to, 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 piggyback off you said of Tracy and Kieran it's it's almost surreal that she will reach out to you guys first I actually have a police background and mm -hmm. it all as you said it all came very much into like a friendship you Absolutely. Know? And, yeah. and uh, give it to her and Kieran for doing all that and she puts in so much work into it and she genuinely like it's not like you know I think in the pandemic people did this the one off to look good oh yeah. we donated no no, no you can see is, that that's not Tracy no, no she's still that's, she's still like will message me hey like what do you need yeah. all the time and that's, that's awesome. why yeah. with you guys when she'd call me we're, you come to the city we of course you're welcome here anytime and we and I like it because it's a big part of my history yeah. too being yeah. a cop so I wanted to, I love when I if I was looked after like that when I was a cop so mm -hmm. I want to we're 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 honored to help you guys and I know speaking for Tracy and Kieran. Um, absolutely honored and thank you so much for all you, you do for us too and we really appreciate and it we, we truly appreciate it as well but this any is any any police officers that are listening from around the country you come to NYC yeah. you come to 5th and you know Mad. what you should do yeah go you should make a little area of, of the bar yeah. and start collecting patches yeah put them up on a cork board we'll put them I'm actually getting these curtains put up here to black out this room so we'll have to get a little area for you and get a bunch of cops back here one night and go yeah. a little bit yeah, that'd, that'd crazy be fun, have a good night you, you know, deserve it put you, some we music. always remember like if I go to a bar anywhere in the country yeah. And if I see there's there's some bars that have like that area, I could put where, it up there in the open in our know, library yeah, section here. You know? yeah. yeah, and people will just bring patches or challenge coins or stickers, and then it, yeah. it grows and grows and grows, and then pe word of mouth, right? Yeah. People say, "Hey, that, that's a, that's a friendly, it's a friendly bar. They love mm -hmm. Casa, they love Farm, and and then it's just it turns into a really awesome atmosphere. So yeah. you should you should do something like that here. Yeah, definitely. Awesome, right. definitely. So I think with that being said, I think we could wrap up the episode. Yeah, this has so. been episode one, season two. Right. Still, it blows my mind that awesome. we're saying that already. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, and then the, if, if you're listening to this now, this has already occurred. But in, in just a few minutes from now, we're going to be ending season one with a live doing show. a live show. The yeah. first live show of the Muster Room podcast. We'll see how it goes. Maybe we'll do it again for season two. Sure. Who knows? Um, I'm really looking forward to that, but this has been a really fun episode. Typically our episodes are a little bit more on the, um, I don't want to say sadder, but serious. serious. We're dealing more with the tra right. tragedy and the, yeah. and the, uh, so th aftermath. this was nice to have some lighthearted banter and, yeah. uh, a historical conversation. Yes. We could say it was, it was a lot of fun. So again, Johnny, thank you for coming on. I truly appreciate it. And, uh, I hope you guys like this episode. Please like share and subscribe to the muscle room podcast on all of your, uh, podcast platforms also follow us on facebook and youtube youtube and, and subscribe uh, we're gonna be on tiktok if you want to follow me on tiktok officer glick i'm um, kind of like the unofficial the muscle room podcast uh, tiktok page he's he's our he's our mascot i'm officer the mascot glick. yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll, 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 I'll even throw one more in for you guys you if go. anyone comes here with a badge and says what you heard Fifth of Matt on the muster room team. I'm giving you guys a free shot. Oh, of course, I'm awesome. awesome. so there you hey, go. Jay, I, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. No. We heard, heard the muster room. room. <laughs> yeah, you say that to me and I got you a free shot. All right, fantastic. All right. Thanks, guys. I think that's a great way to wrap it up. So, Absolutely. again, thank you for listening. We love you guys. We'll see you in the next episode.